Hello, everyone. This hour on Verbling, we are doing part two of my perhaps two part class in Great Short Stories. So, this is the second hour of Great Short Story number 10 Charlotte Perkins, The Yellow Wallpaper. So, we're going to begin with just a quick review of what we've learned about in the story so far. We're going to read the entire story and hopefully get to at least the beginning of our um, of our discussion. If not the whole discussion, at least we'll begin it. And I've got some discussion questions for you. First, a little bit about me. I'm John Eric, your verbaling teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out in Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. Here are three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up, which means Turn off your microphone when you're not speaking so we can keep the classroom quiet. Tune in to the new vocabulary words and use them actively so I can correct you. And open up to your classmates. Relax, have fun, we're all here to learn, and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. Um, all right. And let me go back to where we were here. So this class, we're continuing with the yellow wallpaper. And look, there's the yellow wallpaper. You can see it right there. Um, let me see. Let me post the link. I can do it. Give me a second. Let's see if I can post it in the chat window. I don't know if I may, if you can see that, but I posted the link in the chat window for you to open. You can I, also just follow along by watching the screen. Okay. I pasted it. Okay. I tried to paste it. Oh, you did. Okay. Very good. Good. Okay. So if you want to open this up or download it on your computer, just click the link that Yuki just posted for everyone. Okay. Um, by the way, let's see who's here besides Yuki. I see Maria Jose. Hello, Maria Jose. How are you? Hello, how are you? Maria I'm, Jose. I'm, yes. I think I remember you from a while ago. Remind me if we've met before. Yes, Is it I your don't. first time? Yes, with you, yes. It's my first time. Ah, okay. Where are you from, Maria Jose? I'm from the south of Spain. Oh, interesting. You're my neighbor. Where are you from in the south of Spain? In Seville, from Seville. In Seville. Okay. Interesting news out of Seville yesterday, by the way. Um, well, I'm not too far away from you. I'm three hours away from you if I oh. want to drive really are fast. Are you in Malaga? <laughs> are you living in Malaga? No, no. Other direction. I'm in Lisbon. Um, Lisbon, Lisbon, okay. I I went to Lisbon some years ago. It was a I, very I remember. <laughs> I went to Seville yeah, four years ago. What was I that? Seville, four years ago. You went to Seville as well. Yeah, it's a very beautiful place. I just I just remember the wall in Seville. I remember go. Park. In the park, there are a lot of benches. Uh, they are uh, covered by tile, very beautiful, beautiful tile, ceramic. Very beautiful tiles in Seville. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Blue, blue very and good. White color. Hang on a second. Portugal's famous for blue and white tiles too. <laughs> well, wait a second. We've got those tiles. Uh, listen, Maria Jose. We are in the second hour of our short story mm -hmm. uh, from Charlotte Perkins. So what I'm going to do is give you a quick summary of what we've read so far. Very quick summary, okay? Okay. So this is what we know so far. The narrator, we don't know the name, but the narrator, which is a woman, and her husband, whose name is John, are renting a beautiful secluded estate for the summer. Estate just means a big property. Uh -huh. The narrator suffers from what her husband believes is a, quote, temporary nervous depression. He orders her to rest as much as possible. 
and he even picks out a room in the house for the two of them. The narrator feels vaguely uncomfortable with the estate, but she, of course, obeys her husband because this is the 19th century, so she doesn't have a lot of choice. She obeys her husband's decision for the two of them to stay there, and she also obeys him uh, when he chooses a large, airy room on the top floor of the, of, the, of the house instead of a smaller, prettier room on the ground floor that she prefers. And in fact, we learn that the room is a kind of a nursery for children, and it's sort of falling apart, not so pleasant, it's got bars on the windows. It's a creepy room, <laughs> basically. Uh, okay. Since her husband is, is a doctor, he wins all the arguments. The narrator would like to spend her time writing, but her husband, her brother, and other assorted family members think this is a terrible idea. So basically, the narrator is living in a house in which she feels uncomfortable, in a room that she hasn't picked out, and is forbidden from doing the one thing that she likes to do, which is to write. So no wonder that she becomes a little bit obsessed with certain things in the house. She's got nothing to do. She's not allowed to do anything. Um, basically, that's all we've gotten to. Just this setting up her mental state and, and listening to the description uh, uh, of her relation to everyone else. And everyone else in the story is a man, by the way. We can't really ignore that. So, and we can't ignore the year, too. So this is in the very end of the 19th century. Let's go back to where we left off. We were on slide six. Hyde was reading. Everyone will get a chance to read, but Hyde, why don't you continue until the edge of the, to the bottom of the page, starting with, it, it is dull enough. What, right now, we're describing the wallpaper in the, in the nursery where her husband has decided they're going to be. So she's describing the wallpaper. Go ahead, Hyde. It's dull enough to confuse uh, the eye in uh, foreign. Uh, pronounced enough to constantly irritate and provoke study. And when uh, you uh, you follow the lame, uh, uncertain curves for a little distance, they suddenly commit suicide, plunge off an outrageous angle. Uh, this destroy themselves in the unheeded of contradictions. The color is uh, re repair repellent, almost uh, revolving, a sm uh, small daring uh, and clean Smoldering. yellow. Smoldering. Smoldering. Smoldering and clean right. yellow. A strange uh, faded by the slow or charming sunlight. It's a dull yet uh, lurid orange in some places. A sickly uh, sulfur sulfur tint in others. No wonder the children children hated it. I should hate it myself if I had to live in this room long. There comes John, and I must put the, uh, this away. He hates to have me write a word. We have right, been. so Hyde, Hyde, we got an important point here. What do we discover at the end of the very last sentence you read? What do we discover about this narration? Where is this narration taking place, Hyde? Taking so look place? at that last sentence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where is it taking place? There comes John. I must put this away. Uh, Still that house. Uh -huh. Well, what is it that the narrator must put away? What is it that she's putting away? Let's be clear about that. Put this away. What do you think she's referring to? Any guess? Um, he's writing things. Yeah, her, yeah she's writing something. The narration that we're reading is probably her journal. Mm -hmm. So when we get to the first section of the story, part act one of the story, basically, 
we realize that we're actually reading someone's journal. She's writing in a journal. Her husband, she hears her husband coming. Oh my God, I gotta put this away. She oh, doesn't. Yeah. He, he he doesn't let me write. And mm -hmm. that's that's basically where we've where we've left off. So I'll tell you what. That's a nice break in the story. Anton, why don't you pick it up in the next part? By the way, if there's any questions at any point, just stop and ask, okay? So, Anton, let's pick it up. It's now time has passed. Okay. We have been here two weeks, and I haven't felt like writing before since that first day. I'm sitting by the window now, up in this atrocious nursery, and there is nothing to hinder my writing as much as I please, uh, save lack of, of strength. June is away all day, and even some nights when his cases are serious. I'm glad my case is not serious. Um, Keep going. Okay. But these, uh, these nervous troubles are dreadfully depressing. June does not know how, uh, how much I really suffer. He knows there is no reason to suffer, and that satisfies, satisfies him. Of course, it is not nervousness. Uh, it does weigh on me so not to do my duty in any way. I meant to be such a help to John, such a real rest and comfort, and here I am a, a comparative burden already. Nobody would believe what an effort it is uh, to do what little I am able, to dress and entertain and other things. It is fortunate Murray is so good with the baby, such a dear baby, and yet I cannot be with him. It makes me so nervous. Wait a second. Who's Mary? <laughs> Who do you think Mary is? Babysitter. Yeah, she's got some kind of babysitter, or probably a better word would be nanny in this case, because the babysitter is there when you go out to the movies. The nanny lives with you. It's like a permanent part of your staff. Like maybe you've got a cook if you're rich, You've got a servant, a butler, and a nanny. So, how would you say? How would you? How would you say that she feels at this point? Is she a happy young mother, excited to do wonderful things with her life? <laughs> what do we learn about her so far, Anton? Mm, not really. She's kind. She's kind of mm, depressed. She's absolutely depressed, yeah, absolutely. And and this this line also that she wants to do all these things, but they take an effort. I mean, it does sound like modern depression, you know, an effort to dress, to entertain. I mean, what is her job? What is she supposed to be doing for a living? If she wasn't so depressed, what, what do you think she would be doing, Anton? Mm. Would she be a civil engineer? <laughs> well, I mean, because I'm just saying that because of this line that you read, um, it's no one would believe what an effort it is to dress and entertain and order things. For me, that line stands out because it seems to me that that's what she's expected to do. So her job seems to be to dress herself, to entertain mm -hmm. guests. And to basically be a maid and put things in order, and that's about it. I don't know. At least I don't get any other clues from the text that she mm. has anything else to do or that she's allowed to do anything else. That's my point of view. It, it oh. looks like uh, maybe her mental uh, health is not so stable. <laughs> maybe something, not. Something like that. Maybe not. <clears throat> okay, and time. Let's continue to the bottom of the page, the bottom of page seven, starting with I suppose. Okay, I suppose John never was uh, nervous in his life. He laughs at me so about this wallpaper. At first he meant to repaper the room, but afterwards uh, he said that I was letting it get the better of me, and that nothing uh, was worse uh, for a nervous patient than to give way to such fancies. Uh, he said that after the wallpaper was changed, it would be the heavy bedstead, and then the ba uh, the bar uh, windows, and then that gate at the head of the stairs, and so on. You know the place is doing you good, he said. 
and really dear, I don't care to renovate the house just for a three months rental. Then do, uh, then do let us go downstairs, I said. There are such pretty rooms there. Then he took me in his arms and called me a blessed little goose and said he would uh, go down to the cellar if I wished and have it whitewashed into a bargain. But he's right enough about the beds and windows and things. It is an airy and comfortable room, as anyone need wish, and of course I would not be so silly as to make him uncomfortable just for for a whim. I'm really getting quite fond of the big room, all but that horrid paper. <laughs> right. So, all but that hard paper. I have a feeling that hard paper is going to be very important to the story very soon. Um, okay, so let's go to Maria Jose. Would you like to read? Yes. Okay, go for it. We're on page eight, starting with Out of the Window. Okay. Out of one window, I can see the garden. Those mysterious, deep shade, shaded arbors, the riotous, old fashioned flowers, and bushes and gnarly trees. Out of another, I get a lovely view of the bay and a little private wharf belonging to the estate. There is a beautiful shaded lane that runs down there from the house. I always fancy I see people walking in these numerous paths and arbors, but John has cautioned me not to give way to fancy in the least. He says that with my imaginative power and habit of story making, a nervous weakness like mine is sure to lead to all manner of excited fancies and that I ought to use my will and good sense to check the tendency. So I try. <laughs> so this this I can't help but bringing this up again, but it sounds like we're back in Stanley Kubrick's movie, The Shining. She imagines she sees people walking through the maze, like walking through the hedges, but he's telling her, Don't give in. Don't give in to fantasy. Um Okay, well let's continue, and then we'll talk about this page. Go ahead, Maria Jose. Okay. I think sometimes that if I were only well enough to write a little, it would relieve the press of ideas and rest me. But I find I get pretty tired when I try. It is so discouraging not to have any advice and companionship about my work. When I get really well, John says we will ask Cousin Henry and Julia down for a long visit. But he says he would as soon put fireworks in my pillowcase as to let me have those stimulating people about now. I wish I could get well faster, but I must not think about that. This paper looks to me as if it knew what a vicious influence it had. There is a recurrent spot where the pattern lolls like a broken neck and two bulbous eyes stare at you upside down. I get positively angry with the impertinence of it and the everlastingness. Up and down and sideways they crawl and those absurd and blinking eyes are everywhere. There is one place where two breaths didn't match and the eyes go all up and down the line, one a little higher than the other. Does, this, <clears throat> does anyone have this experience? I remember when I was a kid looking at the patterns of the wood in the walls, especially in the basement, and I always thought that I could see faces looking back at me, you know, just because of the grains of the wood. So I relate to this. <laughs> Does anyone else have this have, have this experience where you start staring at a pattern and it seems to be doing things? Or am I the only crazy one? I have the same I'm, experience when I was a child. I, 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 I counted the dot dot or dirty on the on and. Uh, on the on the ceilings, and I have imagined such a ghost, and 
pictures and <laughs> any kind of uh, imagination uh, from the ceiling, from the uh, pattern of the ceilings, and that that from ceilings, and it makes me cra crazy. <laughs> and that's why you're crazy today. <laughs> no, no. Now no. I have I have no such a strong uh, imagination, but. Oh, uh, I see. I see. So if you're crazy for other reasons, uh, yeah. let me ask you. Let me ask you. Well, Maria Jose, you were reading. So, what do you think she's actually doing? She's got this very imaginative way to describe the pattern. What do you think she's actually doing in the room? I mean, she's so particular about the details. Do you think she's just sitting there staring at the walls? What, I mean, if you were her, what do you think you would be doing in the room, in the bedroom, to get this vivid description of, of the pattern? She doesn't want to write, so she's simply watching um, the... So she's how is the staring room? at the wall. Yes. Yeah, she's just staring, yeah. I also get the impression that she's, you, she could almost be tracing the pattern with her finger or something because she's so particular about the direction of the pattern and what it means. It seems to take on a life of its own. Okay, well, Maria Jose, let's, let's finish the, the rest of this page. I think you start, yeah, I think it was there. I never saw. I never saw so much expression in an inanimate thing before, and we all know how much expression they have. I used to lie awake as a child and get more entertainment and terror out of blank walls and plain furniture than most children could find in a toy store. I remember what a kindly wink the knobs of our big old bureau used to have. And there was one chair that always seemed like a strong friend. I used to feel that if any of the other things looked too fierce, I could always hop into that chair and be safe. So she's got a history <laughs> of, finding, of finding friends in furniture. So maybe, maybe this goes back something to something very deep in her childhood. Let me just see how many pages we have so I can gauge the time a little bit. So this is page 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Eek! So 20 pages and we're on 8. Okay, I think to speed this up because I am just don't want to run out of time. Uh, I'll take a turn reading, but I'm going to read a little bit fast, okay? So I'll go, and then we'll go back to Yuki next. Um, just so we can speed this up a little bit, because I'm afraid we're going to run out of time. We must finish the story, even if we don't get time to discuss it today, but we've got to finish the reading. Okay, so on page 9. The furniture in this room is no worse than inharmonious, however for we had to bring it all from downstairs. I suppose when, when this was used as a playroom, they had to take the nursery things out, and no wonder. I never saw such ravages as the children have made here. The wallpaper, as I said before, is torn off in spots, it is, and it sticketh closer than a brother. They must have had... Uh, perseverance as well as hatred. Then the floor is scratched and gouged and splintered. The plaster itself is dug out here and there. And this great heavy bed, which is all we found in the room, looks as if it had been, been through the wars. But I don't mind a bit. Only the paper. Ah, there comes John's sister. Such a dear girl as she is, and so careful of me, I must not let her find me writing. She is a perfect and enthusiastic housekeeper, and hopes for no better profession. I verily believe she thinks it is the writing which makes me sick. But I can't write when she is out, and see her a long way off from these windows. 
There is one that commands the road, a lovely shaded winding road, and one that looks off, looks off over the country, a lovely country too, full of great elms and velvet meadows. This wallpaper has a kind of sub pattern in a different shade, a particularly irritating one, for you can see only for you can only see it in certain lights and not clearly then. But in some places where it isn't faded and where the sun is just so, I can see a strange, provoking, formless sort of figure that seems to skulk about that silly, conspicuous front design. There's Sister on the Stairs. Okay, so that's like part two of the story. Part two ends with a very interesting observation. What is it that our narrator sees for the first time in this story? Did everyone catch that? Yes, uh, John's sister appears now. That's true, but what does the narrator, John's wife, what is it that John's wife thinks she sees for the very first time? Uh, she thinks uh, uh, narrator is uh, uh, crazy. crazy. <laughs> narrator has a disease and she uh, she, uh, she, um, uh, but, wh but what is it that she sees for the very first time in the wallpaper? Did you uh, catch that part? Take a, take a look at this, at this description right here in blue. Take a second. There you go. It's this line right here in blue. Do you see it? Mm-hmm. So what is it that the narrator thinks she sees for the very first time in the story? Did anyone catch that? The pattern of the wall, yeah, wallpaper. And, and what is the pattern? What is this new pattern that she thinks she sees? Let's be clear about that. Is it different than the other pattern? I think so. Notice how she describes it as a strange, provoking, formless sort of figure. So what does that sound like to you? I'm not talking just to Yuki, I'm talking to everyone. What does that sound Irritating like? One. Say again, please. Irritating one. Irritating what? The pattern. What pattern? It's very pattern. important. Hmm. It, uh, it's not like the other pattern. Romanesco, yeah? <laughs> um, the key word here is figure, figure. Without that word, it won't make sense. Strange, provoking, formless sort of figure. What is a figure? What's another way to say figure? Gro grotesque. Mm. Well, but what is a figure? A figure is also another, another synonym for figure would be what? It, it, it's like a living thing. So. Yeah, what kind of living yeah. thing? What kind? A figure, we, we, uh, the first like figure... A wave, like a, like a seaweed. Like a what? Like a seaweed, like a wave. It's a very... Mm. A figure is like a wave? Really? Mm -hmm. I, would say a figure, I would say a figure is like a body. Like a silhouette. Like a silhouette, exactly. Like a silhouette. She thinks she sees the silhouette of a person behind the pattern in the wall. She thinks she sees a body, a figure. And at first, it's just a shade. It's like a sub-pattern. It's different. But it's the first time we get this description. And then the sister comes up the stairs and she says, oh, i got to stop writing. So, so anyway, I don't want to leave that section without being clear about that. Yuki, let's find out what happens afterwards. So some time has passed now. We're on to part three of the story here. Okay. Well, the 4th of July is over. The people are gone. And I'm tired out. John thought it might to me, uh, 
John thought it might do me good good to see a little company. So we just ha had mother and Nelly and the children down for a week. Of course, I didn't do, do a thing. Jenny, she do everything now. But it tired me all the same. John says, if I don't pick up faster, she shall send me to where Mitchell in the, in the fall. But I don't want to go there at all. I had a friend who, who was in his hand once, and she said he's just like John and my brother, only more so. Besides, it, it is such an undertaking to, to go so far. I don't feel as if it was worthwhile to turn my hand over for anything. And I'm getting, I'm getting dreadful, dreadful, fretful, and fretful, fretful, sure. and sure. cure, cure less. careless, <coughs> careless, 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 yeah, okay, careless, <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, querulous. Uh, I I cry I cry at nothing and and cry most of the time. Of course, I don't when join the here or anybody else, but when I'm alone, and I'm alone alone a good deal just now. Join the kept in town very often by serious cases, and Jenny is good and let me alone when I want to have to. So I walk a little in the garden or down that lovely lane, sit on the porch under the roses and lie down up, dine, lie down up here a good deal. I'm getting really fond of the, a room in spite of the wallpaper, perhaps because of the, the wallpaper. It dwells in my mind so I lie here on the great immovable bed. Immovable bed. It is nailed down. I believe that I believe and follow follow that pat, that pattern about my the about by the about by the hour. It is as, as good as gymnastics. I assure you. I start. Will pay, will say at the bot at the bottom down down in the corner over there where it has not it has not been touched, and I de de determine for the south southern time that I will follow that po pointless pattern pattern pointless pattern to some sort of conclusion. I know a little of the principle of, de of design. I. I, and I know this thing was not arranged on arranged on arranged on any laws of radiation or alternation or the repeat repetition or symmetry or anything else that I ever I ever had heard of. It is repeated, of course, by the breath by the breath breath. Breath, 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 by the breath, and now and not otherwise. Look that in one way each breath stands alone, and blow, bloated, 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 yeah. bloated and and bloated curves and flourishes, flo flourishes, flourishes, a kind of debate to. Romanesque, with with de delirium, delirium, delirium treatments, delirium treatments go well, go wall, go walling, go walling up and down in isolated column of, columns of fatuity, fatuity. Hang on a second, waddling, 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 go waddling up and down. <laughs> In isolated col columns of uh, fatuity, but on the other hand, 
de conecto di diagonally. Diagonally. Ah, I connect di diagonally and the sprawling, sprawling outlines run off in great slanting we wave of optic or holder, like a lot, like a lot of wall, wall following, yeah, following sheaves in full chase. Jeez, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> All this page is just a description of the pattern. Yes, very. It's really just a description. Very pre precisely, uh, she described the pattern of the wallpaper. Right. What's the game she's playing with herself in reality? What's she actually doing in the room? Uh, she's uh, writing a uh, diary. That's true. And she's describing her main activity. What's her main activity? Because, uh, do you agree with me? It seems that she's tracing the lines in the wallpaper. Her main activity is to sit there, look at the pattern, and trace it, uh, and 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 try to find some kind of logic to it, some kind of pattern. But there is no pattern. It repeats, but it doesn't seem to follow any laws. It seems arbitrary, and that's the impression that I get. I don't know if you agree. Yes, she's she's tra tracing the line of the wallpaper very, very closely. Precise, closely. Yeah, very closely. Uh, and um, and uh, it irritated her firstly, but now she has more interest in the pattern of, of the wall. Right. She seems like she's she seems like she's um, obsessed now. Yes, so it is. was it was irritating, she's but absorbed. now she can't stop. She's absorbed in, in the pattern of the exactly. wall, wallpaper. It sounds crazy, a little. It sounds crazy, but it's it's probably true. Uh, who is next? If we go in order, I think are we back to Hyde? Is that right? I, I forgot the order now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go for it, Hyde. Uh, the four things goes horizon horizontally too. At least it seems so, and I exhausted myself in trying to distinguish the order of uh, it going in uh, that direction. They have used to horizontal uh, breadth of a freeze, and uh, that adds wonderfully to the confusion. There is one end of the room where uh, it is almost intact. And there, uh, when the uh, cross right cross right fade and uh, the low sun shines directly uh, upon it, I can almost fancy uh, radiation. After all, the uh, in interminable uh, gross, grotesque seem to form around the common center and rush rush off in headlong plunges of equal uh, the uh, destruction. It makes me uh, try to follow it. I will take a nap, I guess. I don't know why I should write this. I don't want to. I don't uh, feel able. And okay, I hang on just a second. One second. Just want to make sure one thing is clear. Uh, two, two things. First, freeze. Freeze is a word from the art world. So what do we mean by they have a horizontal breath for a freeze. Do you know what a freeze is? Is that clear what she means by freeze? Or not? Uh, not uh, actually freeze. Well, it's not freeze like cold. It's freeze like a design. That's mm -hmm. why I want to make sure. So do we know what a freeze is? Is that clear or not? What, what kind of design is a freeze? Do you know? Grotesque? Well, not necessarily. A freeze, a freeze can be like pictures of mythology mm -hmm. or pictures of animals. A freeze can be found on Greek and Roman buildings. The Parthenon freeze is a famous freeze. So it's kind of like a design of animals or figures, right? 
So that's we're not it's not freeze like the verb to freeze, just so it's clear. Mm. And and second, this she keeps saying radiation. She doesn't mean radiation like a nuclear bomb radiation. She means things that come out from a circle to 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 radiate away, like an octopus has radial arms. They come out from the center. So she doesn't mean radiation in the common sense. She means it in the old sense, like circular. I can almost fancy a radiation means I can almost see some kind of circular direction, some radiation to come out from the center. Just to make sure it's clear what she's actually describing here. Okay? Um, Okay, keep going, Hyde. Let's go down the edge at the end, the bottom of the page, from I and I know really, John. And I, I know John would think I absurd, but I must say what I feel and think I, in some way, it is such a relief. Uh, but the, the effort is getting to be greater than the re relief. Half the time now, I am awfully uh, lazy and lie down ever so much. As John said, I must lose my strength and have me uh, take uh, cod, li cod liver oil and a lot of... <laughs> cod liver oil. She's, she's liver oil. <laughs> Even then, they had, they had remedies for, the, for everything. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> cod liver oil, okay. And, and lots of tonics and things to say nothing to of ever and ale, and wine, and rare meat. Dear John, he loves me very de dearly, and hates to have me sick. I try to have a real, uh, uh, honest, uh, reasonable talk with, her, with him the uh, other day, and tell him how I wish he would let me go and make a visit to uh, cousin Henry and uh, Julia, but he said I wasn't able to go nor able to stand it after I got I got there, and I did not make out a very good case for myself, for I was uh, crying before I had finished. It is getting to be a great effort for me to think straight. Just this nervous weakness, I suppose. And there, John get, uh, gathered me up in his arms and just carried me up, upstairs and laid me on the bed and sat by uh, me and re read, my, uh, read me. Uh, read to me? Read to me. Till? Uh, till it tired me, uh, my head. He said I was his darling and his comfort and all he had, and that I must take care of myself uh, for his sake, and keep well. Uh, and keep well. Keep well. So, <laughs> so, in brief, Hyde, what mm -hmm. happens to her? What happens to her when, okay. uh, I mean, yeah. She knows he, love, uh, he loves her very much, so she need, she need to be at, she need to take care of his, her health absolutely so he loves her but he loves her but he certainly seems to be very controlling at the same time but i guess she feels that his feelings are general, genuine because we get that here but there was also something else um, he hates having me sick. I tried to have a real earnest, reasonable talk with him the other day and tell him how I wish he would let me go to visit cousin Henry and Julia, but he said I wasn't able to go. So it's true that she feels that she loves him, but what do you think about this? She she wants to get out of the house, <laughs> right? She keeps she She wants to go to a different room. He won't let her. She mm -hmm. wants to. She wants to go visit cousin Henry and Julia, but he said I wasn't able to go, nor able mm -hmm. to stand it. I mean, what do you think about that? I, I can't help but notice if he really loves her. What, why? Why can't he let her go? What's the problem? Is is it is it really that 
difficult? Or do you think he's just imposing his will on her? Do you think he's really concerned about her, about her health? I don't know. For me, it's not clear yet. What do you think? Uh, she loved him. So uh, even though she wants to uh, go out from the house, but uh, she wants to follow her uh, will, her will, his willingness. Mm -hmm. And look at this line here, Hyde. It is getting to be great effort for me to think straight. So even thinking is difficult. Mm -hmm. Is nervous weakness. And dear John gathered me up and carried me upstairs and read to me. So it kind of makes me wonder if if all of this is just being imagined because thinking doesn't usually take a lot of effort. <laughs> let's let's find out. Okay, we're we're somewhere around the halfway point of the story, I suppose. We're on page 12, and I think we're back to Maria Jose. Listen, we're definitely going to run out of time, but I've reserved another hour. So if we don't get finished in the next 10 minutes or 15 minutes, uh, we're going to do one more hour. So we will definitely, definitely finish the reading, even if we don't have time to discuss it, because we've got to do the reading at least. It's really hard for me to gauge how long the stories will take. So we just have to... In some cases, we just have to read it and see. Okay, let's see how far we get in the next 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, who was the next? Oh, I'm sorry. It's actually Anton. You're next. It's my fault. Anton. Mm. Okay. He, uh, he says no one but myself can help me out of it, that I must use my will and self-control and not let any silly fancies run away with me. There is one comfort. The baby is well and happy and does not have to occupy this nursery with the horrid wallpaper. If we had not used it, that blessed child would have. Uh, what a fortunate escape. Why, uh, I wouldn't have a child of mine, an impressionable little thing, live in such a room for worlds. I never thought of it before, but it is lucky that John kept me here after all. I can stand it so much easier than a baby, you, uh, you see. Of course, I never... Uh, mention it to them anymore. I'm too wise, but I keep watch of it all the same. Uh, there are things in that paper that nobody knows but me or ever will. Behind that outside pattern, the, the dim shapes get clearer every day. It is always the same shape, only very numerous. And it is like a woman stoop, uh, stooping down and creeping about behind this that pattern. I don't like it a bit. I wonder, I begin to think, I wish John would take me away from here. So, we've seen this before. She started to see a figure. But now, it's not just a figure, it's a woman. A woman stooping and creeping about behind the pattern. Just to make this clear. So this was at the end of part two, I think it was. And we've got it back again. But it's getting clearer and clearer. An important point. An important point, Anton. <laughs> Very important. Okay. okay, Anton, sorry to interrupt. Keep going. Mm. Um. Yeah, it is, it is so hard to talk with John about my case because he is so wise and because he loves me so. But I tried it last night. It was moonlight. The moon sh shines at all around just as the sun does. I had to see it sometimes. It creeps so slowly and always comes in by one window or another. John was asleep and I hated to waken him. So I kept still and watched the moonlight on, on that undulate, undulating, 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 undulating wallpaper till I felt creepy. The faint figure uh, behind seemed to shake the pattern just as if she wanted to get out. I got up so softly and went to fill and see if the paper did move. And when I came back, John was awake. What is it, little girl, he said. Don't go walking about like that. You'll get cold. Uh, I thought it was... I thought it was... I thought? No, it should be I thought. I thought it was a good time to talk, so I told him that I really was not gaining here and that I wished he would take me away. 
<coughs> Keep going. We, we, let's go to the end of this section here. Keep going, Anton. Okay. Why, darling, said he, our lease will, will, be, will be up in three weeks, and I, I can't see how uh, to leave before. The repairs are not done at home, and I cannot possibly leave town just now. Of course, if you were in any danger, I could and would. But you really are better, dear, whether you can see it or not. I'm a doctor, dear, and I know. You're gaining f uh, flesh and color. Your appetite is better. I feel really much easier about you. I don't weigh a bit more, said I. Not as much, and my appetite may be better in the evening when you are here, but it is worse in the morning when you are away. Uh, Bless your little heart, said he with a big hug. Uh, she, she shall be as sick as she pleases. But now let's improve the, the shining house uh, hours by going to sleep and talk about it in the morning. And you won't go away? I asked gloomily. Why, how can I, dear? It is only three weeks more, and then we will take a nice little trip of a few days while Jenny is getting the house ready. Uh, really, dear, you are better. Better in Buddha, perhaps, I began, and stopped short, for he sat up straight and looked at me with such a stern, reproachful look that I uh, could not say another word. My darling, uh, said he, I beg of you, for my sake and for our child's sake, as well as for our own, uh, own that you will never for one instant uh, let that idea and there is nothing dangerous, so fascinated to, to temper, temperament like yours. It is uh, a false and foolish fancy. Can you not trust me as a physician when I tell you so? So, of course, I said, uh, I said no more on that score, and we went to sleep before dawn. He thought I was asleep first, but I wasn't, and lay there for hours trying to decide whether that front pattern and the back pattern really did move together or separately. Hello. That's all? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Can you hear, John? Oh, shit. Hello, can you Hello, hear me? John. <laughs> yes, now I, I hear you. Okay, yes, I don't know what's going okay? on. Okay, yes, I'm, I survived. I, I was in the yellow wallpaper, but I'm back now. Everything's okay. Anton has read that, that old, 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 old page. No, no, I, I, I heard you. For some reason, okay. you couldn't hear me, but I, I could hear you. Um, okay, so... We ended up with separately, right? Mm -hmm. um, what was I going to say? I think we. Okay, well, I was going to ask you something. What was it? Uh, da, 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 da. Listen, Anton, what do you make of this moment where she, she, he, he insists that she's getting better, and she says, "Yes, getting better physically." Well, what does she mean, getting better in body? What, what's she insinuating, Anton? <clears throat> up here where it says better in body perhaps what does she mean by that better in body perhaps mm, not mentally not mentally and, and what would you expect him to say would you expect him to I mean when I read this I, the first thing I would think is he would you expect him to reassure her does he reassure her? 
Mm, no. Not really. <laughs> Not really. He's a doctor and he doesn't have much of a bedside manner. So how is his reaction a little different than we might expect? We kind of expect him to say, oh, no, no, you're, you're, you're getting better mentally and physically. Just don't worry. But he doesn't really say that, does he? What is his reaction, in your opinion, Anton? But he doesn't really care about him. Well, I don't know if he doesn't care, but, but he says this line here, about this, this line here in blue, do you see? Mm -hmm. don't, don't let that enter your mind. And not listen. You know what, Anton? I agree with you. He doesn't care. I absolutely agree with you. Because he says, I beg of you for my sake and our child's sake, as well as your own. But notice he says, my sake first, then the child's sake, and mm -hmm. then your sake. It's in that order. So he comes first, then the child, and then her. I can't help but think that that is deliberate in some way. Maybe he doesn't realize it, but it seems to say a lot about him that he puts himself first, then the child, and then her. So for our sake, don't think about those things. He doesn't say, no, no, you're fine. He says, don't think about those things for my sake. Nice guy. <laughs> um. So let, let's ponder that for a moment. We're at the end of the, I think this is the fourth part of the story. Uh, yeah, I think we're at the end of the fourth part. So what we're going to do is, if you, uh, it's going to take a little more time to, to finish the reading. So I'm going to open this up to a, a third hour if you want to join me. If you can't for whatever reason, uh, it's up to you. You can follow along on Verbling or or YouTube, and I'll read it myself. But if you can, come back. We'll read it, and we'll try to get to some discussion. This is a lot longer than I thought it would be. <laughs> but I don't know. I think it's worth reading the whole thing. So I'm going to end the class now, but I'll begin it again in, in about a minute and a half. Okay, so come back and feel free to join us if you'd like to read the last part, the last third of the yellow wallpaper. Course. Bye for now. Okay. Hey, bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. See you.